already signed and everything, so I'm allowed to speak. So when they told me <coughs> when I can start, I will do it. One or two minutes. So check Facebook and everything before I start. <laughs> Something, uh, this presentation is going to be a bit uh, different. <laughs> um, I hope you don't mind that. Um, I saw so much code before and so much uh, words on the slides that I thought, oh, maybe I can do something different. So, before I start, I'm going to. It's about protocol there. Protocol there is a framework that you will see later uh, that I designed um, like some months ago and it's still work in progress, but it's pretty cool. Uh, but before I'm going to start, talking a bit about me and how I reached that point. So, uh, my name is Victor, I'm from, from Spain, from the south, but sadly I live in the Netherlands, which is really, really cloudy and rainy. And <laughs> yeah, it's a bit depressing as well, but it's cool and they pay. So, <laughs> um, so th those are the things I do. I, I really like to do really atypical things with technology. I don't want to do like the typical things. I don't like to make the typical apps. I want to do like something that is different. Um, as an example, I'm gonna show you a few videos of things I like to do to make. Um, oh, oops. Um, oh, one second. I'm gonna. I forgot to. So 
it was pretty cool because we made the game in such a way that you cannot play alone. So we saw like people kind of playing along and then immediately it's like, oh, it's impossible. There is so many little guys and asking the people around, can you play with me? Because they're attacking us. Um, so you see, I like to do to make this kind of thing. Um, I'm gonna wait for the video. I'm gonna go next. So just I, I just put this as like just, just to remind me that I have to talk about that. <laughs> so protocol there, yes. So I used to make a lot of crazy things with, with phones and other technologies. Um, somehow I got in touch with uh, some people at Motorola. I'm that guy, by the way. When I was slimmer. <laughs> Um, no, I didn't, I didn't fell from the track. <laughs> um, so th this was a project with uh, Google and Motorola. Now, you know that Motorola bought, uh, Google bought Motorola, and now they sold it and these things. But we were in a group inside Motorola called Motorola ATAP, and they are continuing in Google doing crazy things. Uh, so I joined them in, a, in this project where basically we had a a tour across the USA, so we started in San Francisco, and we ended up in Boston. It was four months and a half. So, yeah, four months and a half, half no airplanes, no anything. Uh, you are wondering, oh, in a really bad hotel? No, because it's paying Google, so really nice hotel. <laughs> um, basically, what we, what we did, we, we went to a lot of universities and hacker spaces and things like that. Um, I don't know if you saw it, here we we had this van and it was full with uh, filled with uh, 3D printers and laser cutters and hackable phones and we went to the universities and let the people to make whatever they wanted and and of course everything they made it was their own property so we didn't steal any idea or anything it was just more like an experiment um, so that was more or less the format um, you see like people hacking. It was uh, 24 hours in three days, like Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, yeah, again, us. Um, I'm the one with the guitar. I'm a Spanish, but I don't play the guitar. Which is funny. But they said, oh, you're the Spanish guy. Where are they take the guitar? Like, okay. <laughs> you know, a stereotype. <laughs> um, so we make teams. The first day we did like some brainstorming, like what what um, they wanted to make during the uh, rest of the weekend, and then they started. And then I was there to help everybody with the technical things. Uh, sometimes not that technical, <laughs> uh, as well, kind of buying food for them and those things. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna show you a little video, so you can have a better idea. Of how the tour looked like.
people who have prosopagnosia, remembers built-in sensors, recognizes faces and voices, and the user is prompted to create a profile. So it remembers built a database as it collects information. Remember it pairs wirelessly using something called the WPS protocol with a Wi-Fi hotspot to communicate back and forth. What we did is we took an IP cam and we hacked it into a pendant and we gave it a mobile form factor that hangs around your neck. So whenever you're speaking with someone and it identifies a face, it will record their name along with their face on their phone. something and for example it's like the GPS so oops oh sorry the thing is in Android you have to declare in the manifest that you are going to use a hardware component in this case the GPS so you have to write this line and like okay I spent like three hours trying to figure out this you know people that usually don't are not used to developing Android and um, now um, by the way we had a I don't have a phone here but we had a phone that we hacked and I have an Arduino and Arduino is a hardware um, board that you can plug sensors and many things, so we had one with a phone. And, now, and then they asked me, oh, so now I want to use the Arduino behind, how can I, how can I do it? And, in, and then I gave them some code and everything, and then they tried to do something, and then time's up. And they were like, okay, it's already finished, and I said, yes. <laughs> and then they were really frustrated. So, because I, I had to experience that, then I started to change a bit the, these things. So I, for example, I downloaded everything in USB, I gave to them, 
Sometimes it didn't work because they came with uh, Windows 8.1 and it didn't, didn't work. Um, some other times they they didn't have internet or like even for example the cables they didn't work. So many things. And I thought, okay, I have to somehow simplify the whole pro process of prototyping and hacking in the shortest time possible. So um, I was thinking, like, mm, I had this slide just to remember that I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I created Protocoder, and you're going to see now in a live demo. Um, so basically, it's, Protocoder is a, it's a, it's not a framework, it's a framework, framework with an editor and everything that you don't have to install in your computer. Because I thought, oh, the, most of the problems we are having is with the computer. And because you have to install so many things, so I thought, maybe I can do something that you just have to install it in your phone and hack directly there. Uh, I started kind of with that idea and I started to move forward and like really organic way, I didn't plan anything. So if you browse the source code, in GitHub, you will see that everything is, is a bit messy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you see, it's pretty nice. So I'm going to show you better uh, a demo. So I'm going to plug this camera I have here. You can see, OK? Is it more or less? More or less. I know it's not the perfect setup. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Protocoder. I can do this. So I have an app. It's an app that you install in your phone. That's all. Um, it comes with a lot of examples. Um, you can see, you can launch the examples, and you can edit the examples here. So for example, this is a little camera. I don't know if you can see. It's a little camera. Um, you can see the source code here, everything. And you can type and write your, your application within your phone. But that's really stupid. Because you, I mean, you're either you have a really huge phone or really little fingers. So the cool thing, I don't know if you notice this, when you are connected in a in a network, it says here you cannot read it, but ah, can you see? It says hack via your browser and type that IP. Okay. So basically, this app contains a web server, um, web socket server, and many many things. And what it creates is a, is a server that provides you a, a, an editor. So I'm going to cheat here a bit because the network is not so good. And I'm going to use the cable. <laughs> so basically, you go here, and I'm going to get an editor. I'm going to put this. So this editor that you see here is being loaded from the phone. It's no cloud. I'm an anti-cloud person, especially because I live in the Netherlands. So, <laughs> super nice joke. Okay. <laughs> so it's a it's a um, editor that lives in your phone. So basically, I can go here. I can say projects, and I can see all the projects and all the examples that comes with. So I can load, for example, one a camera, the one I, I load before. So you see here, it's a bit different than Android, isn't it? It's not really Java, because it's JavaScript. Everything you make with Protocoder is JavaScript based. The only thing is like, I, I made a, you can access all the native uh, Android API, but as well I made like kind of a layer on top that simplifies the whole thing. So for example, just adding a camera, you just have to say this, add camera view, and then you have a camera, that's all. And then if you want to take the picture, you say this. Camera, take picture. And then if you want to add a button, you say add button. I'm going to do an example for you. So I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call, yeah, I don't know. Like, call. Okay. So I start here. And I'm going to do, for example, I'm going to use an accelerometer. Okay. So I can go to sensors. And I can get here all the reference of the everything I can do with protocol there. The big bit that basically you can do many things, but not everything. This is not the ultimate. I'm not, I'm not selling you anything. If you want to do 3D graphics, go to and um, grab something else. Uh, but this is really good for certain things. 
So, for example, I'm going to use the accelerometer. So I can click here. This is one of the cool things I implemented two days ago. <laughs> I can click here, and then it copies this. So I do this, and I write console.x, and then I run it. And then automatically, I don't know if you can see here, N nothing shows on the screen because it's empty, but this is showing something, isn't it? This is the accelerometer data. If I move the phone, you see how it changes the values? But you cannot see anything here because it's a bit complicated. So let's do something. There is a few things here uh, in the UI. Um, that is a plot. Uh, okay. So I'm going to add a plot. I'm going to call it plot. And it's going to be in this position. You can do absolute positioning and relative as well. 0, um, no, minus 7, to 7. And then I'm going to say plot.update with the value x. And then I'm going to run it. I don't know if you notice how fast is this to, to check things. So for example, if I press, I'm going to do this thing. So you can see both. So if I press close, close. If I press run now, tum, uh, but now it has a new thing. It has a plot that if I move the, f I don't know if you can see the red thingy. Mm -hmm. So you can see the, the values there. But I can do more things. So sometimes, for example, this works in Wi-Fi, as I said, but sometimes you don't have access to the, to the phone. So I made this thing called dashboard that <coughs> I can go here. Always forget the names. Okay, I'm gonna say plot, and then this name. Nine, seven, oops, seven. I'm gonna call it uh, dashboard plot. Uh, X. So now I'm gonna press run. And if nothing, yeah. Okay. So you can see it now in your editor, which sometimes is really handy. Sometimes it's not handy, but it depends what you are going to make. You have to think that most of this framework that it was developed was meant to be used with this kind of boards or with Arduinos. So for example, you can make a robot or you can make whatever hardware application you want in a really easy way. So for some things, this is not useful. For some other things, it's really, really useful. So sadly, I cannot use, I cannot use this because the uh, batteries um, that I had broke. So I cannot use it, but uh, I'm going to show you a few other things. So I'm going to show you a few more things that you can do with this framework. So a few things. Uh, I'm going to create another project. Or maybe, yeah, I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call it like sound. Uh, I'm going to drag and drop a few sounds Up. and now they are <coughs> uploaded to the device uh, I'm going to go to media and I'm going to play that sound so I'm going to do uh, 1.mp3. Now I'm going to change the jack. So, here it is. I'm going to run it again. Oh. You can hear it? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do a few more, more things. I'm going to play all of them at once. But now it has really cool things, is that while it's executing, you can execute a single line of code. So for example, I'm going to execute this. Now this. Or everything. So this is, you might think, um, OK, that's cool, but what is for? <laughs> I don't get it. 
So the first thing is because it's cool <laughs> to show off sometimes. Um, sometimes it's useful for, for example, for this. So imagine you have an interface. I'm going to load this. I have an interface here, OK? And I have a button. I'm going to declare here the variable button. So now I'm going to run it again. It's exactly the same. I'm going to hide this. OK? And I'm, I'm, I can inspect the code, and I can modify things on the fly. So for example, I can say, uh, I'm going to move this button to, for example, this position. And so for example, I can execute only this line of code. And then you see how the button moves. So that's pretty cool, for example, when you are like creating an interface or something like that to modify things on the fly. It's pretty nice. It's, I don't know how annoying you find, for example, in Eclipse or um, whatever you use to do a change and then press compile and then wait forever. <laughs> and sometimes it's even more. I think, why? And, and then you realize it's broken. And it's like, and then you spend five minutes of your life just to see that error. It's really annoying. And I think, in my opinion, the tools have to change in order to have these kind of things that go faster, especially at the beginning. When, for example, when you have the idea of what you want to create like really, really well set, then you can go through and then do whatever you need to, to have it, to accomplish it. But especially when you're in this kind of experimental uh, phase where you want to try things and and figure out that, that if, oh, this animation is going to work here or not, or this UI is going to, I don't know. So you have to experiment, and you don't have to spend time in, in really, really stupid things. Um, more things I'm going to show you. So for example, this thing I told you before about the dashboard, it's something that is not only for showing plots. It's something that you can use it for more things. So right now, I'm, I load this really simple code here, which basically I'm kind of creating a few buttons and uh, um, that do things. So for example, I can press one button, and then I can show the dashboard remotely. And then now I can do things uh, bidirectionally. So either, for example, I can add a plot. So I add the plot, and then I can update the plot with random values. Or for example, you can do vice versa things. So for example, you can press this button. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's vibrating the phone. <laughs> or for example, you have, uh, this is something I didn't kind of finish yet, but this is a slider. And when you move that slider, you modify things on the phone, which is pretty handy. Imagine that, for example, you prototype something for home automation or something related to hardware. Sometimes you, you, it's really annoying to go, for example, if you have something, a device that is plugged on the, on the wall, and you are trying something, or maybe you are embedding Android in a car. Sometimes it's really annoying to just go to that place and plug, with a, plug the phone or the Android device with a computer and code something, and then leave to see the results or something like that. With this, you can do everything remotely with wireless. Um, more things. Um, it has a really simple Canvas support. So for example, you have to draw some graphics. So for example, you can do things like that. And this is really simple as well to make. In this case, I don't know if you see, but in this case, I'm uh, directly loading Android, uh, importing Android uh, libraries. So I'm not using my own library. I can directly access to anything, which is pretty handy. So for, because like sometimes I, I have like many wrappers for many things to simplify the code, but sometimes you don't have it, so you can access to native Android. Um, you have uh, as well web view access. So in this case, I'm, uh, I'm adding two web views. So you can add HTML content. And the cool thing is it can talk with the normal JavaScript API. So for example, if I'm pressing this button here, um, the phone is going to vibrate as well. 
So and you can as well, for example, take in data from the from the normal code and pass it to the web view. Um, something I have to mention is that protocoler is not based in the web view. I'm not using the web view to be a JavaScript interpreter. I'm using something else. I'm using Mozilla Rhino, which is a, a JavaScript interpreter that can access Java uh, classes. Um, many people ask me, why are you using that instead of the web view? Because sometimes it's faster the web view, because Google made a really good job with uh, the engine, the V8 engine. And I said, <coughs> yeah, it's fine for certain things, but in my case that I want to access all the native libraries and do things really, really fast, uh, have like really fast callbacks, that uh, V8 doesn't work pretty well with that, in my experience. In fact, this project started with V8, with the web, web view, and accessing like different classes, but it was so annoying that I had to find another solution. Um, Oh, wait, wait. I don't know if you know this, this thing here. Have you seen this? It's the Makey Makey. It's something that some guys from MIT designed. Basically, it's an Arduino, but oversimplified for kids. Um, what, what it does is when you plug it in a, in a computer, it works as a keyboard. So when you plug, for example, these little uh, clippers, I'm going to put one here. One. Yeah, here. So a lot of people made like really cool projects. For example, you can plug this into a banana, and then when you touch the banana, you can play a sound. But you need always a computer for doing that. The cool thing is, um, you can use this with a protocoler. So I'm gonna load first uh, an example here. So it's a key event. I'm gonna load this sound. Ah, it's the, the example I cannot modify. Uh, So now it's running, and now I'm going to plug this thing. A second. Stuff, yeah, you know. I have many stuff here. Like I do, <laughs> most of the things I do is hardware, but it doesn't work with Lego yet. But it has Bluetooth support, ah. and Mindstorm has Bluetooth. Yeah. So. show you because I brought, I brought the wrong cable, but <laughs> you have to believe me when I say that it works. So basically, one of the cool things about this Makey Makey is, um, I didn't mention but before I, I, I was working, I was a, an, I am an educator, I, I work with kids. Uh, this is a really cool thing to introduce kids to technology because you can do things really, really, really fast. So for example, what I used to do with them is download a game or go to uh, any Flash um, website and play a video game and let them plug this and then create different interfaces with bananas or a cucumber or whatever they want. So one of the cool things about this is that you can use it with protocol there as well and create like different things. For example, you can make a, a sound instrument or something like that. Um, a few more things to mention. Um, 
it has a, for example, a sound engine. I don't know if you all have worked with sound in Android, but it's really, really annoying. Um, especially because the APIs that, that Google made for Android, they are really, I mean, they are not really easy if you want to do like something more complex than playing sounds. So I embed as well a, a really nice uh, sound engine called Pure Data. I don't, I don't know if you've heard about, it, about that. But it's pretty nice and it has support as well. So you can do, in a few lines of code, you can do something which is really annoying. <laughs> but you can, you can imagine the, the possibilities. Like, you can make an instrument with this. And you combine it with the banana thing. So that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't, I couldn't show you the banana <laughs> here, but it's not a joke. <laughs> anyway, so um, I wish you could, I mean, don't be afraid to ask me <coughs> questions because I prefer to have like more kind of relaxed um, back and forth chat instead of me and with the pressure that you are like higher than me and I'm in this kind of situation. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, can you ask for export something in an APK or no? Um, well, you, I don't have a button to do it, okay? But what you can do is, um, so Maybe every project- I want to share with yeah, someone yeah. else. Yeah, I got it. So I don't have a button to do, but what you can do, it's um, you can import everything, you can download everything from GitHub, and I have uh, an example code where you can just drag and drop one of the folders that this creates. It creates a folder with JavaScript and the resources, and you just put it in the assets uh, folder, you compile and you have it. That's pretty easy. More? Your software is more on the version of Android. Oh yeah, it's um, it has to be higher than four. That's the only one. I don't know if you have experience with Android, but it's I, in my opinion, my Android wasn't mature before four, so I, I decide to just go for that version. You want? Yeah, but. Uh, let me think for a second. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> just, uh, sorry, I just. No so, what, oh, yeah. what a, yeah. Sorry, I, sorry to interrupt you. I, I remember it. Um, you were talking about hooking up the Makey Makey to the, the Android device which has protocoler on it. Yeah. How, how do you listen to what uh, is being sent to your mobile phone? How, how does that work? How is so, it's pretty easy. I mean, one of the three. Uh, tricky thing with the with the Makey Makey is that it's a keyboard. It's a normal yeah. keyboard. I, I know how to make it make it. I, I actually won it once and I used it on yeah. a banana and stuff. It's so it's a keyboard and Android has like normal support for keys, like for keyboards. So you can plug a keyboard into your Android device and it will work. So yeah. when you do it, it will work. But one of the things that I focused with protocoler was in, in to make a tool for hardware prototyping especially. So I have support for for example, this little board is it's called YoYo -Yo board. It's pretty much like a like an Arduino, but a bit simpler to use. And I have fully full support on this, so you can code something. For example, you can blink an LED in three lines of code. Uh, I have as well a, a kind of experimental um, Arduino support and some other things. Uh, I didn't mention as well that I have, uh, for example, networking capabilities. I have web sockets implemented OSC. OSC is a protocol that a lot of people who work into creating interactive things or creating things with music, they use it a lot to, to communicate systems. Um, so, I will support for video as well. I have support for most of the things that allow you to, to have a fast 
prototyping. Something that, yeah. <laughs> Does it have uh, any issues with sounds and, and video in general? I mean, latency. So I, I can tell you something. For example, uh, something I I made few days ago, a week ago. Um, my my girlfriend is a video artist, and she made an installation where she had like three uh, videos playing at the same time uh, with projectors and so on. And she went to uh, um, artist review and she wanted to show that project, but she couldn't carry with all the full equipment. So what she did is carrying three tablets, and I made an app that synchronized the three videos at the same time. And I made that in two hours or something like that, pretty fast for that kind of application. And you couldn't notice the delay. In if this is what you you yeah. mentioned. And in terms of sound delay, there in Android there is a well-known sound delay. That's right. Um, that especially for real time. Um, yeah, I still have it. Mm -hmm. This is something that you cannot really solve in an easy way. Um, something else. So w one of the things I wanted to, um, or at least the reason I, I started with with Protocoder, is that. I got really fed up with the way that, and I'm sorry for saying this, I got really fed up with the way that people usually create applications. I'm, I was trained as an engineer, but later I got so frustrated being an engineer that I became something in between art and engineer and, and educator, something like that. And I realized when you go to another field, um, especially now, for example, that there is this uh, willing in the industry to take kids and teach them programming and so on. And sometimes you think, like, how can you teach a kid programming with something like Eclipse? I mean, it's nonsense. You cannot do that. You cannot show a kid uh, or a person who is not familiar with computers an editor with 3,000 buttons and, and text everywhere. No, you have to do something more familiar, something that you can set up really easily. And this is, for me, an approach of doing this. I'm not, as I said, this is not the ultimate tool or anything. What I want to, to show to the people and to the world is that you can do things in a different way. And I would like to see like people having the same approach and saying, oh, that's cool. So let's, let's start making tools that you can create things or you, you can create a set of tools that people can start using computers in a different way rather in the boring way and, and not practical way that we, we do now. Um, basically, this is my message to you. So I hope you spread it. <laughs> um, if you ask, like, is this uh, available? Is, is it open source? Yes, it is. You can download everything from GitHub. I haven't commit some changes for the few, for few weeks ago because I was kind of in holidays but I work on it. Um, I hope if you are interested in contributing or using it, using it or something like that, uh, please feel free to reach me. I'm a pretty reachable person. Um, <laughs> really? Um, and really, don't be afraid of saying, every time I don't have a fucking clue. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have a clue on how to use this. <laughs> So how can I do it? And I will answer you, right? so no problem. Or um, another thing I wanted to say is like, stop using, stop making applications that is a list view and show some data that's so boring. You start doing something a bit crazier. I'm totally sure that it's not gonna give you money because I didn't get money, but you can get like super cool jobs as the one I had. <laughs> and I think that's all, more or less. More questions? Yeah. Is it hard to extend the platform? Oh, it's super easy. So I can, I'm going to open now the other thing, the clips. <laughs> so one of the things that you can you see on the on this side, those are all the, this is all the API I've made. OK, so you have, for example, camera and Android. Um, I don't know, like the console. Or an edit, well, you can embed the editor as well. The dashboard, like file, everything, everything. So now, if, if Eclipse loads, this is another thing. 
takes forever. <laughs> Um, but I think I have here. Oh, yeah. This is better, maybe. No. Okay. okay. So it's pretty easy to extend. So the only thing you have to do is create a class. I have a folder which is API. Okay. So the only thing you have to do is include a class file um, that you have to start with J something. So for example, in this case, J Android. And then everything that you have inside will be exposed, for example, to this one. So all the, all the methods here, here are the ones which are created here inside. So each one has like this directive, it's called JavaScript interface. It's like web view, but it's not the same um, annotation. Uh, eh? annotation, annotation. It's not the same. It's something that because I, I started with web view and then I changed, I kind of keep the same name. Um, and then the only thing you have to do is, for example, here is for the documentation. Those are the parameters that you have to, to pass. Or if it requires something, a minimum API or something. But this is like optional. The only one that it needs is this one. So everything that has that uh, annotation will be exposed, and that's all. And will automatically be picked uh, by protocol. Nice yeah. job. Thank you. I hope you can you want to use it and do crazy things and use these kind of boards and and do something farther than a list view. Uh, um, make phones vibrate or um, something that you can throw at the phone to the air and the one that reaches the higher then wins or something. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, that's all. So thank you for coming. I hope this won't be online, see? Because I said so many so many bad words and everything. Thank you. <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, if you want to ask me something later, don't worry to reach me or if you are going to go to the party and dance or uh, have a beer, I will be there. <laughs> Thank you.